Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green Bard class combo deck you could say, featuring the 2 mana enchantment which says legendary creatures we control enter the battlefield with an extra plus one counter on them. We can level it up for a red and a green, in which case legendary spells we cast cost a red and a green less to cast and this effect only reduces the amount of colored mana. So that's the important part about this card is discounting our legendary creatures. So of course our deck is filled with red and green legends and most of them concentrated at two mana. We've got Targnar, the Bodyguard, Galia, and then at two mana there's also Magda and Gorogoro, Goro, which we can still cast for one mana with a Bard class out. So that leads to some very explosive turns, since we can also count on Burning Tree Emissary, despite not being legendary, can still add a red and green. So turn two, best case scenario, play Burning Tree, play Bard class, and then on the following turn, level up, and then empty your hand of all these two mana legends, including Magda and Gorogoro, Goro, if we have an extra mana left over and then Esika is how we potentially get to a level 3 of Bard class which reads whenever you cast a legendary spell exile the top two cards of your library and you may play them this turn. So if we have a ton of free spells to cast that find more and more free spells every time we cast them we can chain together a whole bunch of them and Esika as we mentioned is a way we can get to a level 3 since 5 mana is not that easy to get to for this deck since we don't have a ton of 1 mana elves for instance to help us out. So Esika is a 1 for with Vigilance, can tap to add one mana of any color and author legendary creatures we control also have vigilance and can also tap for one mana of any color. So now all of a sudden all our creatures turn into mana creatures, especially synergistic alongside Magda, which whenever it becomes tapped also makes a treasure token, so it can essentially make two mana with Esika out. So that's how we can set up a level three bard class. And then the last piece of the puzzle is a mirror box, which says the legend rule doesn't apply to permanents you control. Legendary creatures get plus one plus one and then non-token creatures get plus one plus one for each author creature we control with the same name as that creature. So the mirror box allows us to have multiple of the same legendary in play at the same time. They will also get bigger over time the more of them we have in play. And Magda also becomes extra synergistic because now it can make more than one treasure every time it becomes tapped. If we have multiple copies of Magda in play it can make more mana and it becomes trivial to cast a whole bunch of these legendaries for free in the same turn as we go off with a level 3 bard class and then we also have the partners as a nice curve topper which can also give one of our creatures extra plus one counters and haste and between the bard class putting a counter on partners and mirror box giving it plus one plus one it can add even more counters to another creature so that also synergizes quite nicely and then some of the legendaries we've covered targnar can pump the team with pack tactics can also double its own power and toughness if we pay for mana there's a bodyguard a recent addition that can protect our legendaries if we sacrifice it gives them industry and one extra power until end of turn. Then there's a Galia, which also definitely benefits from Burning Tree being in the deck, since we're more likely to be able to play two creatures on turn two, and then turn three maybe already play Galia, attack with three creatures, and then we'll be able to discard a card at random and draw two cards, so it provides a bit of card advantage to help us dig towards the missing pieces. And then we've got uh, Magda making treasure, and then a Goro Goro, also very useful at giving the team haste. So if we manage to combo off with our level 3 Bard class, we end up with a ton of creatures in play. They don't necessarily get to attack right away, so Goro Goro can give those haste. And then if we pay 5 mana, we can also potentially make a 5-5 five five Dragon Spirit if we're attacking with a modified creature, which we can do so pretty easily thanks to Bard class putting plus 1 counters on them. And then Asika giving the team vigilance and letting them tap for mana means we can potentially attack with our team and then still tap all our creatures for mana to activate Goro Goro to make that dragon spirit token and uh, the mana base also includes two copies of Den of the Bugbear and then the channel lands also get a nice discount from controlling our legendary creatures so those are also valuable additions and then just need lots of red green dual lands only 22 lands since we don't really need a ton of mana in the first place ideally just get to three lands and then find an Esika so our legendaries can tap for mana sometimes we can also cast Prismatic Bridge if we have another Esika in play since then our legendaries can make blue and black and white mana as well 
well, so that could be a reason to replace some of the basic lands with additional pathways to potentially make it easier to cast Prismatic Bridge, but for now I'm happy with this setup. So yeah, let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand is missing a Bard class. Does it have enough to be a keeper? I think so. Burning Tree and then Isika, hopefully on the following turn. Can still give us an explosive start. Opponent on a zombie graveyard deck, okay. So we have a double burning tree now. Still need a third land for a Sika. And there's an early champion of the perished, which is gonna pick up a counter right away, thanks to Shambling Ghast. So I think we lead with Bodyguard. And then hoping for a forest to play Sika. Eaten Alive deals with our Bodyguard. Does not protect our Burning Tree, sadly. Opponent's got one card left, so... We're not under too much pressure, we may have time to find some more answers. We'll go for Isika. And then we're not too far from casting a Prismatic Bridge. This turn, Galia can tap for mana right away. Play Targnar. And pass. Servants, okay. So if they can bring back a bunch of zombies at once from the graveyard, that can trigger a couple times. So we'll play Prismatic Bridge, we'll have to tap all our legendaries to do so. Champion attacks. A bit of a strange attack, but uh, sure, I'll take it. Prismatic Bridge finds another Targnar, not the best hit. So I think it's time to send in the team and then hope to uh, find something exciting of Galia. Sadly, don't have a modified creature to activate Goro Goro. Got a replacement. You would think adding one power to each creature counts as a modification, but sadly does not. Has to be an equipment or a counter. So they can trade for most of my board. Uh, can double its power and toughness, so that works. So your opponent may be able to bring back all their zombies next turn. Or now play Disciple and pass it back. Keep a land in hand in case we find another Galia. It's gonna be a Daragraph Colossus, that's fine. Pretty large as an 8-8. Eight eight. But we can maybe go wide enough. Take 5 from Champion. Whatever we find off Prismatic Bridge, we can also give haste with our Disciple. And a Partners is excellent. Then we'll still be tapped. So, give our creatures haste. And counters on probably Targnar. And then we can even activate this to make a dragon now. 
That sounds good. If our opponent has a rally the ancestors, they could still cast it for one. And yeah, there it is. So bring back double shambling ghast and stitcher supplier as extra blockers. So now we have to be careful not to leave ourselves without blockers. Okay, so tap these for mana. And uh, let's see. These are all going to survive still. So I guess we'll make a dragon here. Let damage happen. And we should be able to take a hit. Shambling Gas probably finishes off our Disciple. And a Burning Tree. So pretty good rally. The creatures did not get exiled since they died. But we may still be able to get there next turn with Den and with our Flying Dragon. So have to jump one of their creatures. And I guess we'll make it... Targnar, keep the dragon. Well, the Targnar pumps the rest of the team, which is pretty huge with Den. So we may still get more damage out of it. So we fall to one. Definitely dead to another Rally the Ancestors. It's going to be a Rite of Oblivion, exiling Targnar. Okay, do we still get there with Den? I think we do. And then we can even... Uh, Channel Crucible, although may not have enough mana for that just yet. So I have two legendaries, this will cost two mana to channel. So I guess that's still worth it. Could have also sacrificed Bodyguard to increase Esika's power by one. But we had one damage to spare. Alright, sweet game here against the Rally Zombies. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got our Bard class, so let's keep it. And see what we're facing. Red-white, another Burning Tree. Something else we can deploy and will make it easier to enable pack tactics. So humans with turn 2 Katilda. All right, plan is simple, double burning train to Bard class. And then next turn, we can deploy Targnar for free, essentially. We'll be a mana short of playing a Sika as well. And then we're not going to be too far away from a level 3 Bard class. Thalia, luckily, wasn't here last turn. And uh, yeah, level of Bard class could also play a Sika, and then next turn maybe level up twice. That could work out better, actually. Can't attack into Thalia, so definitely need that level 3 Bard class to take over. Azusa, okay. One gets to play additional lanes, but they don't have any. So, level up. And then I think I hang on to Targnar to maybe uh, enable the level 3 Bard class and for now just play Magda since it does generate quite a bit of extra mana. And then we can attack with Isika. Might also be able to play Prismatic Bridge soon. I'll land number three. Opponent's got six mana, basically. Golos, okay. What does that find? 
just to try land. And we get to untap, and now we should be able to have a pretty explosive turn. So let's say we tap Magda. Could also maybe wait until we find another Magda so it makes more than one treasure. So we'll tap a Sika first. We'll level up. Play a free Galia. Haven't played a land for the turn yet. Sadly, we'll struggle to play a mirror box. Another Targnar. So, if I tap Galia for mana, play an untapped Stomping Grounds, and then now if I tap Magda, we will actually have four mana to play Mirror Box. So we're giving up on partners for the time being, but it allows me to play another Targnar. And that's going to be it for now. Pass it back. And then we still have another Isika we could play, which will now stick around thanks to the mirror box. Joda makes a lot of sense too. Is your opponent also a legendary deck? Just a different variety. Don't know if they have any great attacks. Another mirror box. Can probably wait. Let's just play another Isika first. Goro Goros, awesome. Another mirror box. Okay, so let's say we tap Magda again. Play a mirror box. Can still give the team haste with Goro Goro. Would we have enough for lethal? Poins got four blockers, and then they can also potentially. First try can kill a legendary to shrink it down, so it no longer gets a mirror box a bonus. We can also tap our creatures for mana, so every Targnar can double its power. So those are all quite threatening. And then Galia could even potentially improve our hand afterwards. Yeah, I think uh, give the team haste and smash, and then see what happens. And opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hands. Definitely missing a Bard class. Is it still keepable without it? And this hand's not too exciting, so we'll mulligan. This is better. And probably okay to get rid of a land here. Could keep Stomping Ground, actually, since we don't have a turn one play anyways. And that's going to make it slightly easier to play a Sika later. Alright. Burning Tree into Bard class. Next turn, level up, play a free Targnar and Galia. Opponent, in the meantime, on some sort of multicolor landfall deck. Okay. Well, we don't have many better turn threes than this. And Asika, not a bad curve topper to help us get to level three potentially. Opponent with a growth spiral after playing a turn two Cobra. So we could see some fireworks from our opponent as well. At least the uh, bodyguard protects us from any sweepers. So three mana left for a Risen Reef, which could still potentially add a mana if it finds a land, but it does not. Okay, Magda also a good combo with Esika, although if I want to draw with Galia, I'll have to keep something in hand, which uh, is probably going to be Magda at this stage. Team has Vigilance, attack with all. Not the best set of draws, but a second Bard class can still come in handy. Opponent jumps with Risen Reef, falls to four. I think I'll hang on to Burning Tree since we should have enough in play already. Just play another Bard class. And pass. Mm -hmm. 
Genesis Ultimatum. Okay, that can certainly get them back in the game. Couple lands and a Risen Reef, so not the best Ultimatum. But they'll still have some mana to work with. So the turn's not over yet. Another Risen Reef. So on the board they seem dead, but if they find a couple more lands they can make more mana. But yeah, that wasn't quite enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. A decent hand. Although a double rockfall I guess is a little awkward here. But I think we still keep any other lands and we're off to the races. And since we're on the play, even if we have to wait an extra turn, it's not a disaster. Our opponent on blue-white spirits, it seems. So next turn we can level up, play Galia, Targonar, and Disciple in the same turn. Opponent goes drawing with a Curious Obsession. So, yeah, an extra land means I can also give the team haste right away, which could also come in handy. Bodyguard, another one we can play for free. Opponent may have a counterspell off the denial. That's fine. Not sure which of these exactly was the most valuable, if I could pick which one they countered. I guess the Disciples probably the most useful one. Supreme Phantom, Gross Shacklegeist. Yeah, turns out counter spells aren't nearly as good when your opponent can cast four spells in the same turn. Another Bard class. I'll probably leave to the wayside. Play partners, if it gets countered, so be it. But uh, could give the team haste with Goro Goro, and then Galia lets us discard Bard class to maybe find something else. And counters go on Burning Tree or Disciple. Well, let's put them on Burning Tree. Can always sacrifice my bodyguard to protect my legendaries. Replacement Galia. And a rattle chains flashed in. Isn't really gonna ambush anyone. So just a trade for Galia. And we still have 15 damage coming across, our opponent's forced to chum block. And I don't see Shackle guys dealing 13 damage. We've got Bodyguard in case our opponent's somehow playing a Sweeper, which I highly doubt. So, sure we'll play Galia while the opponent's tapped out. Eagle to pump the Flyers. So that's a great incentive to splash a bit of white. But not quite going as far as to play green for Collected Company as well. So we're at 9, opponent draws. But this should be game over. Alright, and an Asika for Vigilance, because why not? Give the team haste. And attack. So now we could have also potentially activated bar class to level 3. If we're empty handed we don't get to draw with Galia, so that's why keeping an extra card in hand can be important. Spectral Sailor has an extra surprise blocker times 2. Still leaves them in trouble I think. Can also activate our Disciple to make a dragon now. So yeah, that's uh, a little bit too much for the spirits to handle. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, and we've got our Bard class, so we'll keep it. Turn 1, tapped Rockfall Veil. Vale. Turn 2, Den. Up against a green-white enchantment deck, so they may have answers to Bard class, although we just drew a backup. And there's a Paradise Druid. So it may also be a kind of an aura deck, playing a hexproof creature here that they can uh, load some auras onto. For now, activate a bar class, free Targnar, and a one mana a Goro Goro. Next turn we can play partners, even give it haste with the Goro Goro if we'd like. Audacity, first of many auras. So they need to find a way to give Paradise Druid Vigilance that can keep attacking and keep Hexproof. Although at this rate, against Red-Green, they may not even have to. So we don't have any good attacks into Paradise Druid. So what's our plan? Don't have a Sika to go with Magda. I think Magda is still probably our best way to eventually level up Bard class, which is how we go over the top. I could attack with a hasty Magda just to get a treasure. Doesn't feel great. So maybe for now put counters on Targnar. And then no attacks. Another Audacity. And there's a Sentinel size for Vigilance so they can attack and block. 15 power first strike, there's no way we can block profitably, so somehow have to win next turn. Burning tree is not going to help with that. Yeah, I think we're dead. Can play a mirror box. Send a team. And our opponent should be able to block two creatures here and survive. We did get pretty close. If it weren't for Generous Visitor, I guess we would have gotten there. Alright. Pass it back, and Paradise Road can cross the finish line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got a Bard class, so yeah, I'm keeping. Up against a, a red deck with Fireblade Charger. Next turn we've got a free Targnar coming up. Turn after our partners. And we've got backups for both. Emissary down. And another partners, alright. A mirror box would be pretty decent now. So opponent may be playing a goblins deck, which is a matchup that should be winnable if we can Kind of go over the top of their synergies, but the Bandit Lord's one of the better ones. So, yeah, I'll uh, block and let them trade for it, since we have another one anyway. And then Partners plus free Targnar. Targnar gets three counters. So that seems worth it to attack. Enables pack tactics all by himself. Battle cry is always good. Can they attack past partners is a question. Doesn't seem to be the case. But opponent goes for it anyway. Kill the Lord, I think, over Battle Cry. Since that's one way they can potentially kill my creatures. 
And then now with an untapped land, let's say I attack with both. I can just double its power and that's game. By quite the margin here. 24 damage. GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We've got our Bard class and a decent hand, I would say. And thanks to Mirrorbox, we can deploy both copies of Targnar. Opponent on the red-white, maybe a Transmogrify type of deck, which can transform one of its uh, tokens into something scary. Let's go to level 2, play Magda, play Targnar. And with the extra treasure from Magda, we get closer to a level 3 Bard class, which is when the fun really starts happening. But Magda never survives. Okay, so Disciple versus Mirror Box plus Targnar. Mirror Box plus Targnar has to be better. So you could see them chump Targnar, take three. But then they won't have something to transmogrify anymore, at least, if that's their plan. And Fire Prophecy is typically played in these transmogrify decks. A Lithoform Engine. Okay, now I'm curious. Although we may not get to find out if we kill our opponent here. So we get two Targnar triggers. Sadly missing the land to double their power, which would definitely be lethal. But uh, Goro Goro can give itself haste. Seems uh, good enough here. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, and while we don't have a Bard class, this may still be good enough. Emissary plus Magda, and then on the following turn we can already maybe draw with Galia. Opponents with a uh, turn one island. Well, let's see what we're working with. A Rune Crab, a mill deck. Okay. And they milled a Bard class we would have top decked too. And there goes another one. Alright, Burning Tree plus Magda. So we're already at 39 cards remaining. And our opponent's only cast one spell so far. So, time for Galia and attack, I think. Then we can still play Targnar second main if we don't discard it, so I'll keep lands in hand to minimize the chances of discarding it. Okay, now we can play Burning Tree plus Targnar. Opponent may be holding a Growth Spiral. Maybe they're playing green for fog effects, who knows. So we're assembling a nice army. Targnar can pump everyone to attack past Rune Crab. And Galia keeps sculpting our hand in her own special way. Mimic to copy Crab. Do we see another fetch land? So that's 12 more cards gone. I believe the last bar class passed us by, or there may be one more left. Although at this point, not the best draw. A mirror box or something like a partner's would be better. Okay, do I want to play a Sika for some reason? 
Yeah, it turns our legendaries into mana creatures. Can be a bad thing. So we can still double Targnar's power. Possible I should stop drawing with uh, Galia, since it's sort of helping the opponent in a way. But uh, I may still need the extra cards. Opponent does not block. Double power. And uh, yeah, that does it. So opponent maybe did not uh, account for the extra doubling, but uh, very much possible they would have milled us out next turn. Okay, so we get to see a red-green Bard class in action, and definitely a fun deck if you just want to have some quick games and see if you can combo off with it. But getting to level 3 doesn't happen as much as I would like. Maybe playing more mana elves could help with that, but then we're also reducing the consistency of the deck once we're going off, so we're less likely to have a ton of those fun turns where we get to cast legendary after legendary for free and uh, completely overwhelm the opponent. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.